we continued discussing Kevin Kelly's excellent advice for living. This section focuses on Kelly's advice on interpersonal relationships. Tech geeks usually don't talk much about relationships. If I had a chance to chat with Kelly, we could probably talk for three hours, without touching on interpersonal relationships. Kelly has recently been interviewed, on several podcasts about this book, discussing work methods and life tips, but he rarely delves into interpersonal relationships. People seem more interested in hearing his views on AI and chat GPT. We've previously shared The Courage to be Disliked, where Alfred Adler mentions that interpersonal relationships are both the source of troubles and happiness. Understanding this field of study, if you completely ignore it, you may have fewer troubles, but you won't gain much happiness either. However, if you care too much, the likelihood of gaining troubles outweighs the chances of happiness. For instance, there's a psychological phenomenon called pleaser personality. These individuals excessively care about their relationships with others, are overly sensitive to how others treat them, fear rejection and isolation, and tend to compromise excessively, even avoiding saying no to people, disregarding their own needs. You might have encountered such individuals. They seek approval from everyone, yet people don't hold them in high regard. On the opposite side, there's the self-centered type. These people often show complete disregard for others' feelings, prioritizing their own needs and emotions, saying and doing whatever they want, and demanding what they desire. While they may feel good about themselves, others might see them as obstinate toddlers. Now, you might wonder, as a tech enthusiast, I just want to focus on my work honestly. Can I lower my presence in interpersonal relationships? Unfortunately, no. Geeks are also human, and especially if you want to achieve something significant, you need to collaborate with others and interact with people. Or perhaps you should craft a charismatic image, like some leaders do. Carefully creating an amiable image, seemingly casual yet meticulously observed, practicing various etiquettes, aiming to provide a refreshing feeling to others. Does this work? It's not only tiring, but can also make you seem insincere. Without genuine sincerity, relationships can lack authenticity. While Kelly's advice might not be mainstream in China, you can't say that, these are exclusive to Americans. I believe these are the common traits of wise individuals throughout history. The core idea of these suggestions is, don't aim to have others like you. Aim to have them respect you. Like can be towards people, pets, or tools. Respect allows you to act freely in relationships, unleashing your potential. True respect is earned, and you must hold yourself to certain standards. To gain respect, based on my understanding of Kelly's advice, you need to cultivate four levels of skills, from basic to advanced. First is sincerity, second is proactiveness, third is mentoring and nurturing subordinates, and fourth is controlling anger. These skills assume you act as an adult, a person of integrity, rather than someone constantly on edge, desiring opportunism while being petty. When interacting with others, it's best to assume everyone is an adult. If you find no adults present, then be the only adult. This isn't self-sacrifice. It's the best for everyone. This section primarily covers sincerity and proactiveness. Kelly's advice is primarily a mindset rather than a technique. He says, your heart needs to be as educated as your mind. The foremost education is sincerity. Chinese philosophy believes in the inherent goodness of human nature. People are originally sincere and good. So, how do some people learn to be crafty and opportunistic? This might be related to the societal environment. In harsh conditions with limited resources, a society might foster a bottom-level harming each other situation, where being overly cautious becomes a survival strategy. However, you must understand that, experiences from such a bottom-level environment, regardless of their accuracy, are not suitable for a better social environment. If you're afraid of being deceived and, hence hesitate to engage sincerely with others, your losses will be far greater. Kelly says, getting cheated occasionally is the small price for trusting the best of everyone, because when you trust the best in others, they generally treat you best. Consider the various scams prevalent today. People are often deceived not because of sincerity, but due to unrealistic fantasies. If you fantasize about getting rich easily, scammers find opportunities. If your needs are unrealistic, only scammers can satisfy you. 
How many honest and upright individuals have been deceived? Kelly says, this is true, it's hard to cheat an honest person. So, if someone is constantly worried about being deceived, overthinking strategies, they should reflect not only on their living conditions, but also on their character. Kelly says, it is not hard to identify a thief. It is the one who believes that everybody steals. Once you have sincerity and an upright heart, you can start learning to be proactive. The best starting point for proactivity is gratitude. Kelly says, gratitude will unlock all other virtues and is something you can get better at. We've discussed gratitude many times before. It's perhaps the simplest mindset used by contemporary elites. Gratitude is a psychological support you provide to others, with almost zero cost, yet it significantly improves social relationships. Importantly, when you express gratitude to others, your own feelings improve. You'll feel like the whole world is supporting you, giving you more strength. Gratitude is also a psychological support for yourself. So, Kelly says, writing down one thing you are grateful for each day is the cheapest possible therapy ever. However, practically, you might feel it's too sudden to approach someone one day and express gratitude. This seems like something not commonly done. Yet, this is your opportunity. Since others hesitate to express gratitude, take the initiative. Kelly says, to become a hero, thank a teacher, who made a difference in your life. The sibling of gratitude is praise. Be ready to give praise anytime, anywhere, actively seeking bright spots to acknowledge sincerely. Like gratitude, when you praise others, you also feel good. Kelly says, to earn bliss just for a moment, send someone, you don't know a compliment for something they did. Your praise might make someone happy all day, but be sure to maintain virtue and, not use praise as a manipulation tool. Kelly says, it is not a compliment if it comes with a request. I guess he mentions this, because praising first and, then making a request might be quite effective. Why else would leaders be so fond of flattery? The key criterion is the sincerity of your praise. More empowering than gratitude and praise is generosity. Be a bit more generous, initiate, and give a little more to others. Generosity is not for the sake of reciprocation, but it is the best way to receive returns. Kelly says, perhaps the most counterintuitive truth of the universe is that, the more you give to others the more you'll get. Understanding this is the beginning of wisdom. This truth might be explained by supply-side economics, and we might discuss it specifically later. Kelly also says, to succeed, get other people to pay you. To become wealthy, help other people to succeed. He further states, it is impossible for you to become poor by giving. It is impossible for you to become wealthy without giving. So, if you want to be generous, might as well be more generous. Kelly says, be more generous than necessary. No one on their deathbed has ever regretted giving too much away. There is no point to being the richest person in the cemetery. He also says, when in doubt, over tip. Of course, better generosity involves more than just tips. It includes helping others and contributing to society. Kelly says, whenever you have a choice, between being right or being kind be kind. No exceptions. Don't confuse kindness with weakness. He says, be extremely stingy in making promises, because you must be generous in keeping them. He says, instead of asking your child what they learned today, ask them who they helped today. He also says, be a good ancestor. Do something a future generation will thank you for. A simple thing is to plant a tree. Gratitude, praise, and generosity are all about actively providing something to others not only improving interpersonal relationships and social ecology, but also enriching your own state of mind. Ultimately, the biggest beneficiary is yourself. Now, get ready. Let's be a bit more proactive. Initiate conversations with people. For example, if you're at a gathering, where everyone is not very familiar, and it feels awkward to strike up a conversation, while maintaining a polite smile, this is your opportunity. Kelly says, everyone is shy. Other people are waiting for you to introduce yourself to them. They are waiting for you to send them an email. They are waiting for you to ask them on a date. Go ahead. The person who initiates contact tends to receive extra points. Overall, I feel there's an asymmetric effect in interpersonal communication. 
If someone does this to you, you usually don't mind and even welcome it, but you hesitate to do it to others. The most typical scenario is asking for help. Walking down the street, a stranger asks you for a small favor, like borrowing your phone to make a call, and you typically won't refuse. Yet, experiments show that many people are unwilling to actively seek help from others. Perhaps, they fear rejection. So, how do you ensure that the other person is willing to engage with you? Kelly has a key suggestion here, which we'll discuss later. Hope this session makes you more open-minded and proactive. If you want to accomplish something significant, be a bit more proactive. If there are no adults in the room, then be the only adult. Light up wherever you appear. However, what I want to emphasize more is the spirit of supply side. I don't ask what I should receive. I ask what I can provide. This is the most important lesson for adults. I plan to demonstrate this principle from an economic perspective in the future. This concludes this part. In the next section, we'll discuss the perspective of others. If you feel there is value in this, please like, subscribe to this channel, and leave your thoughts or suggestions in the comments section. Let's grow together and read more good books.